Forgive me for being, for being from down south, I'm still all right. And I'm still really keen to have a chat with you about this whole issue. And it's great to see you all turn out today. I add my respects that were uh, acknowledged at the beginning to the Tasmanian Aboriginal community. And I thank you all for coming out today to show your views and to hear more, I imagine, about this stadium that's proposed down south. Now, let me start by saying one of the things that really sticks in my craw about this proposed stadium, this stadium issue, is that it's been used to cause division over something that should have been one of the most uniting things for our state, a state AFL team. We're now seeing division created, and not just created, but driven harder and harder by political leaders, by the Premier. And that is absolutely shameful, absolutely shameful. The absolute easiest thing for a political leader to do is to divide people. It's easy to divide people. You do it with fear, you do it with hate, you do it with causing uncertainty, you undermine people and you divide them. That's easy. It takes no courage and no vision and no compassion and no community to do that. When we drive the community apart, like the Premier and his government are doing with this issue, we hold everyone back. We hold our whole community back and that's wrong. So let's look at ways we can tackle this and unite together is what I'm saying. And I thank you all for being here today to help give a sense of that. Right, so back to the stadium. From the time it was first announced as a Peter, Peter Gutwin's thought bubble actually back in February last year, it's been this force of division in the state. The community have been shut right out of it, right out of it, time after time, it's been a top-down, behind-closed-doors decision-making that's driven it forward. Shame, Shame indeed. Yes. If, if important decisions that affect our community and shape our important places can't happen out in the open with involvement from the community, you know there's something dodgy going on. You know that the community's best interests aren't being prioritised in that process. It's the vested interests of someone else who's behind those closed doors, influencing or maybe even dictating those decisions being made. And that's wrong. And let me say there are a litany of issues and problems that are being raised in relation to this stadium. I'll mention just a few others are mentioning them too. Uh, and we'll probably go into more detail than me, but the ones that jump to the forefront of my mind that I hear about over and over and in my job and especially as a member of the Public Accounts Committee, we're seeing evidence presented over and over about potential issues with this proposed stadium. So to mention a few, what appears to be an utter lack of credibility of the business case and the claimed economic outcomes that are being put forward around the stadium. Utter rubbish. The disrespect to the Tasmanian veteran community in relation to the placement right on the Senator virtually. And the, the disrespect to the Tasmanian Aboriginal community with zero consultation before the announcement was made, the deals were signed and the previous plans thrown right out the window. We had a plan there for a nation leading Aboriginal reconciliation park to be the spine of the redevelopment uh, of that area around Macquarie Point. Thrown out the window, the first the Aboriginal community hear of it is in the news, on the media. Shameful, shameful. Terrible. The overriding of the Sullivan's Cove planning scheme. Now that whole waterfront area in Hobart is covered by the Sullivan's Cove planning scheme. It's specifically designed to protect the heritage values of the waterfront there, which are nationally significant heritage values. Thrown out the window under the project of state significance process, none of that counts. None of it. Shame, Shame indeed throwing out the master plan that had been carefully consulted on, that had been put in place, that was progressing. Much as people who are promoting the stadium like to say there's nothing happening there, it had been. Remediation had been happening, planning had been happening, the Abor Aboriginal community were deeply involved in the planning. All of it thrown out the window. It's a ridiculous notion too, the thing that really, really comes down to the foundation of it. Ridiculous notion that this stadium can be built for $715 million. What an utter fantasy that must be. We're here daily. In fact, even the newspapers today, if you pick up the Mercury, we hear daily about major projects 
here and nationally going well over budget, far beyond doubling, sometimes tripling in costs. I was looking up actually the Perth Stadium in WA because people like to point to these stadiums in other states when they talk about the one proposed here. Well, the Optus Stadium in Perth, see if this sounds familiar. It was first put forward by the Bayak government there for $700 million. Sound familiar? You know what happened by the time they were contracting it? It was $900 million. And you know how much it ended up costing? 1.6 billion. Okay, it's a joke to think that we can deliver this for $715 million. And it's insulting for the Premier and others to keep suggesting that that's the case. Now I'm from the South in Hobart and there's a huge focus there about the appropriateness or not of Macquarie Point for whacking a great big 40 metre tall stadium. That's probably of less significance for you here in the North. I think the things that you might think about up here, if I were you, is about who is paying for this and who is benefiting from it. Because that's an interesting equation to think about, isn't it? From that statewide perspective, the government has actually itself indicated this is a project of state significance. They're literally putting it through the POS process. Project of state significance. That's all very well because certainly the cost is a statewide cost. All taxpayers, all Tasmanians are paying for it. Every single one of us, you included. And we're prioritising the building of this stadium in Hobart. But I'm not convinced, and I doubt you're convinced, that the benefits of this are going to flow statewide, are going to flow through to the north, to the northwest, and to you. So if it's a project of state significance that we want to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on, there's certainly other options we could be thinking about that aren't this stadium. What makes me really angry really angry about this whole scenario is that I think Tasmanians are being deliberately misled. I think political leaders making ridiculous claims about the proposed stadium, presenting it as some sort of magic bullet, is absolutely insulting to the community. And I think Tasmanians are being set up for a fall. The message I want to share with you today and finish on is that, is this situation about the stadium, I think, isn't a one-off. It's not a bolt out of the blue. I think it's what happens when democracy is being eroded and governments don't feel they have to be fully accountable to the community. Yeah. When a Premier and a government is so used to being in power that they think they can just make top-down decisions behind closed doors and impose them. And when people speak up, they'll just bully. They'll just push and they'll push and they'll defeat everybody in their path. Absolutely unacceptable. When good governance is set aside because it's inconvenient to have to make good decisions with the community, when an autocratic government forgets that the beating heart of democracy is the people out there in the community, we know we're in trouble. I think a good democracy, a strong democracy, comes from citizens demanding that governments and parliaments be better. And that's what this, is, what this means today. Us gathering together, I think, is when citizens come together to say, we want you to be better as a government and as a parliament. Oh, <laughs> my time's up. Could I just finish by saying, I think Tasmanians deserve a strong democracy. I think Tasmanians deserve to be represented by leaders of integrity and respect who make decisions appropriately in the best interests of the community. That's not what we're getting. So what I would say to you is this. I think when we're gathered today, we're not people who are against something. I think we are gathering as, pe as people who are for things, for a lot of things. I think we're for good decision making, yes? I think we're for honest political leadership, yes? I think we are for using our resources to build for the whole community, yes? Absolutely. So keep making your views heard and keep standing up and demanding better.